Hi, and welcome back. So we're going to continue speaking about the cost of capital. Last time we dealt with the cost of debt, this time we're going to deal with these three. Cost of preferred stock, cost of common stock, cost of retained earnings. And then in the third part of this, we're going to loop it all together into the weighted average cost of capital, and that will close our discussion of the cost of capital and capital structure. So let's jump right in. Um, number two is cost of preferred stock. So, cost of preferred stock. So, the cost of preferred stock, um, or the cost of issuing any type of new preferred stock, is the ratio of the dividend to the share price, um, what we call the dividend yield. But something to note here is that in order to issue stock, um, you know, we need to pay out dividends, uh, and you know, it's those dividends that actually becomes the the cost of issuing that stock. Um, there's no G in preferred stock. There's no growth in preferred stock. Um, so over here, we're just going to write down that the cost of preferred stock equals D, and that's always D1. I mean, over here with preferred stock, it could be D0 or D2 because the dividend never changes. But that is going to be over P. <coughs> now. Over here, I've left a little gap because the truth is, it's actually minus F, and I'm just going to write over here exactly what that means. So D is the is the dividend the preferred stock is paying. So, for example, if it was a you know six percent preferred, um, you know we would automatically assume a one hundred dollar not one thousand like bonds, but a one hundred dollar um, you know face on the on the preferred stock, then that would be a six dollar dividend. That's just kind of an example. Um, P over here is the price um, of the is the price of the of the preferred stock, and then F over here, which we've added in, it, is what we call the flotation cost. And it's actually a very simple concept, and it's very intuitive as to why it's being deducted over here. And the flotation cost is basically the amount of money that the company uh, pays to. Um, you know, an external investment bank to to issue the stock. Um, so because we're trying to take a, a dividend yield, which is really D over P, the reason why we do minus F over here is because P minus F is really the net price that we're getting in. Remember, this P is money flowing in because when we issue the preferred stock, we get the price that an investor is paying for it. So I'm just going to write over here that P minus F is really the net price. Um, the flotation cost needs to be deducted from what we're getting in because we're paying this F out. That's a cash outflow to some investment bank, you know, to help us issue this preferred stock. Um, so, you know, that's the cost of preferred stock. Now let's move on to number three, which is the cost of common stock. Now the cost of common stock is very, very similar to the cost of preferred stock. Um, so let's just write KCS cost of common stock. Except the only difference is is that there is some type of G um, because common stock, you know, a lot of the time they will grow the dividend. The company will grow the dividend. So um, again, we have D1 over P minus F, but this time we have plus G. Essentially, it's exactly the same as the cost of preferred stock. It's just that in preferred stock, G is zero. So you know, if you add a zero here, it doesn't doesn't really change anything to this. So this is basically the same as the cost of preferred stock, except that we have this G over here, which is the is the dividend growth rate. Um, so, you know, G is, is usually given in the question. Um, if it's not, a lot of the time you can just calculate it uh, using the dividend growth model. Um, so a lot of the time, you know, for example, Let's say you were given D0 and you were given D1, um, you know, and you were asked to calculate, you know, asked to calculate the cost of common stock, and you were given a D0 and a D1. You could easily calculate G um, because we know that D1 equals D0 times one plus G. So rearranging that, G actually equals D1 over D0 minus one. And that would lead you to to G. 
and obviously these are as percentages. Um, D over here is you know is also a, a dollar figure. P minus F will both be dollar figures, um, and that's the the cost of uh, of common stock. Now let's move on to number four, um, the final one, which is our cost of retained earnings. Now, the cost of retained earnings um, is calculated. Gosh, that's very slanty. Uh, cost of retained earnings equals D1 over P plus G. Again, it's exactly the same as the previous two. The only difference here is there's no flotation cost. Why? Because there is no flotation cost on retaining your earnings. Um, so again, it's exactly the same thing. Um, you know, uh, G over here. You know, there's there's kind of an idea that that G um, as well as is equal to a company's return on equity um, multiplied by its uh, retention rate, or one minus its dividend payout ratio. Um, let's just put R here. I don't think this is on the syllabus. Um, it may be. If it is, then you know there's the formula to calculate G, but it'll be usually be given to you, um, so there's nothing to worry about there. So that's the cost of retained earnings. And again, you know, we already explained that the cost of retained earnings are really, you know, the returns that investors expect from the company's reinvestment of the of the earnings. Or again, you know, the other way to think about it is it's the opportunity cost of not buying back their own stock, and then earning dividends, you know, on the stock that they that they buy back, which is a, a pretty interesting. Uh, pretty interesting point. Um, so again, this is just calculated in the same way, um, and obviously all of these answers are coming out as, as percentages, so you know, scroll back up, it's all coming out as, as percentages. Um, so, so in the next video, um, we're going to tie together the uh, these four costs that we've just learned how to calculate, um, and we'll tie them together into the WAC, the Weighted Average Cost of Capital.